Hey guys, so we've been through fair value gaps. Today I want to talk about order blocks, what they are and how we use them. So first things first, ICT defines an order block as an opposing candle before the market direction that you want to trade. So if we have a bullish move, it's going to be the bearish, the bearish move down before the bullish impulse. So what does that mean? So smart money doesn't take into account imbalance in their order blocks. It's just the, you know, down candle before the up and, you know, usually it breaks structure and that kind of stuff. But uh, for what we're going to be looking for, we're going to want an imbalance in that push out. So we want to push down and then a push out with an imbalance or a fair value gap. Now, preferably what we want is a liquidity sweep. So we want price to sweep some liquidity, come out, create a fair value gap, and that's going to create um, a high probability order block as well as a high probability fair value gap. So in this situation, this would be our order block. That makes sense. I'll make the fair value gap blue for you guys. There we go. So let's look at some examples of this. You see, we got bullish movement. We have this big bearish candle, sweeps liquidity, taps into another fair value gap over here, creates a new fair value gap. And then we're going to mark this out from body to bottom as our order block, all this order block. That is our bullish order block. So as you can see, price comes back in, taps into our order block and continues onward. Now, when that happens, that leaves us with another order block. Um, if it has big wicks like that, I usually just draw the body. It's totally up to you. I like to get it refined. A lot of times what price will do is it'll just come in and tap the very top of the body of that candle. As you can see, it did here. So here, same thing, bullish impulse out. It creates a fair value gap. And on top of that, we have a bullish order block. You can see price respects that and keeps on going. Now, what happens there is that, you know, price kind of comes back, sweeps that as liquidity and continues onward. This is the reason that some people like to use the bottom candle or the last candle instead of the whole move. Um, personally, I like to do it that way too. If, if the, it depends on how big the move is. If the move's a small move like these three candles, then I would use, you know, from here to here as an order block. Um, obviously this isn't an order block because there's no imbalance, but my point being that I like to refine them down. You can use bigger ones. Um, you know, price respected both of those price respected the whole, you know, um, down close before the up close and price, you know, here, same thing. So, uh, if you want to use just the body of that last candle, which is generally what I like to do, um, either just the body or body to wick, uh, here we got this huge wick. So I like to use just the body. And as you can see here, price respects that and continue onward, continues onward. So how do we use that? So let's say we have this nice order block, you know, real nice imbalance price comes up, sweeps liquidity into that order block. If you don't know this, basically the concept of and the theory of an algorithm in the market is that it looks for one of two things. It looks to rebalance price that was inefficiently delivered and, you know, imbalances, fair value gaps, and it sweeps liquidity to get better pricing. So. When I trade, I want to see at least those two things. I want to see a sweep of liquidity into an imbalance or an order block because an order block does have an imbalance with it. Um, and you can use these things as confirmations. You can use breaker blocks. You can use inversion fair value. Guys. Basically, the more you have, the more likely the trade is to succeed. So here we have a sweep of liquidity. And a sweep of liquidity is just, you know, in standard trading textbooks, when people trade, they're taught to put their stop loss, you know, below the low here. And so banks and financial institutions know that. So they will use your stop loss to trigger and get a better price for them to buy because your stop loss is just a pending buy order for them. Um, 
So when it gets triggered, you can see here, it shoves price back into that order block and takes off. So now that we've seen a sweep of liquidity into an order block, what I'm going to look for is a fair value gap coming out of that. And you can see we get one right here. And so what I would simply do is I would put my stop loss um, at the bottom of the middle candle of the fair value gap right here. And I would target liquidity. So this would be and again, guys, this is going to take time for you to see. You know, this takes years to develop. But once you see it, you can see it and you can see how the market books and how it moves. So. Here I have equal highs. We've swept liquidity. We're already bullish. I got a nice fair value gap. That's my entry limit order right there. Stop loss below the middle candle and targeting that liquidity up there. And there is your trade. That's a what? Three, three and a half to one, one to three and a half. Um, so the other thing is break evens. I don't use break evens in most of my trading. The only trading I use break evens for is if the stop loss is really long or it's something where I'm kind of staying in or adding to a position, you know, instead of just taking a single position. So here, here the reason is when you're confident in your skills and you're confident in the market and how it books, when price comes in and enters, I know that I don't know, but you know, my intuition and statistics are telling me that price shouldn't go below this. If it goes below this, then the market structure is changing. The market structure is, you know, going bearish and my idea is out the window and that's okay. That's a loss, you know, but at the same time, you know, if my price comes up here, I don't go break even. I wait because that's my target. Like, what is the market going to do? You know, two things. It's going to do one of two things. It's going to find where price has been inefficiently delivered and it's going to find liquidity. So what has happened? Price has came in. It's found where price wasn't efficiently delivered. The next thing it's going to look for is liquidity. Where's our nearest liquidity? We have this big old fat pool of equal highs. Equal highs and equal lows are great places for dumb people to put their stop losses and a great place for you to put a take profit. So that's a beautiful setup. Come into that bear or sorry, bullish order block, create a fair value gap out of that. We swept liquidity into that. So liquidity is already, and that, that's the other thing is, you know, when you're looking at either side of the market, you know, look, look at what's the reasons for the market to be bearish, you know, has it swept liquidity? Has it gone into an imbalance? So what has price done? It swept liquidity here. It filled this imbalance. So now that, you know, that bottom side of the market has been taken care of basically by the algorithm. So what's the algorithm going to look for next? It's going to look to, you know, sweep liquidity or find imbalance in the other side of the market. And here you can see perfectly what happens. It fills this imbalance, comes back down, hits this order block right here. That's another order block. And then comes out. And again, you can draw that as, you know, that this last candle draws the whole thing. Usually it kind of hits that last one candle before the up move. Um, you know, and the thing about this is what, what the market does is that it knows what it's doing at all times. And you can see here it's setting up liquidity on the bottom. It's setting up liquidity on the sell side. So we've got equal lows down here. So in the future, when price comes back and let's say the market structure shifted bearish, I know that this might be a good place to put my take profit. And again, you, you can't get married to your personal belief and your idea of what the market's going to do. You have to look at what the market's doing and act accordingly. Remember, you should never be, you know, guessing or trying to anticipate what the market's doing. You're always reacting to what the market's doing because you can't control the market. So why are you going to sit there and try to, you know, predict where it's going to go or, you know, sit there and try to blow the candle up on the screen, you know, just, just wait and react to what the price is doing. So here you see, we come back, we fill that imbalance, fill that order block. And, you know, if you got the balls and you want to, that's a great place to, you know, put on another trade. There you go. Bottom of, I'd probably use the same stop loss, same thing, double your trade. There you go. If that's within your risk tolerance. And then there's your take profit. So it swept the buy side liquidity up here. So what is the algorithm going to want to do? It's going to find an imbalance or it's going to sweep liquidity. So what happens next? Here's some imbalance, fills that in. Also sweeps the liquidity equal lows right here and taps into, I bet you anything, a another imbalance. So this is the hourly. Um, and again, price is all fractal. 
So use your time frames. Look around. What what is price doing? What is it tapping into? Yep. Look at that. Mm -hmm. So price comes down, sweeps this liquidity, comes into this order block on the 10 minute. Bam. Right there. And again, as price comes out, what happens? You know, we swept liquidity, come out, create an imbalance. There's your second entry. And so you can literally sit here all day and just watch the market and, you know, take these moves and target, you know, target liquidity, target imbalances. And it's all fractal. That's the thing about trading is that the market is fractal. That means, you know, like if it works on the one minute, it's working on the five minute. If it's working on the 15 minutes, working on the hourly, the daily, the weekly, the monthly, the yearly, it doesn't matter. Price moves the same. Obviously, when you get down to smaller time frames, it gets a little more choppy, but it still does move the same. So, you know, it, depending on what you want to do, if you want to look at higher time frames, so you see, okay, on a higher time frame, you know, I've seen that on the hourly price came in, filled that order block, created an imbalance. There's my entry. Now this is a swing entry, you know, you're going to be in that for a few days. But, you know, if you hit your take profit there and you see, okay, price is still bullish. We swept that on the hourly. It swept liquidity here. It's coming into something. What's it coming into? Drop down in your time frame. Drop down on your time frame again. And what do you see? Oh, okay. It's filling this order block. And what did that order block do? It's, again, it swept liquidity. So those are the kind of order blocks I like to look for. I like to look for an order block that has swept liquidity and created an imbalance because those are the most you know high probability. Now this, I don't know if we have anything to target because I think we're creating new highs back here. But again, you know, that's your trade. And again, important thing, not I'm I don't know what it's gonna do, but important thing of not using, you know, a break even. I know price is gonna respect that. I don't know, but I'm assuming. So I keep my stop loss there because you know, I almost tap back in to a break even. If you would have set it a little higher, you would have hit break even. But I know the market doesn't have a reason to come back down there, or it shouldn't. And if it does, then I'm wrong. So let's change instruments. I'm gonna go on, let's do GU like this works on everything, you know, it doesn't matter. And as you get better at this, your eye will kind of gravitate towards certain things. You know, as you look around, like right here, I mean, price is just fucking chopping, but you can see here, uh, bullish move before a bearish imbalance. And what do we have? Price comes in and taps it. This is on the hourly. So let's say I just have this marked off on my chart. You know, I've got this order block here. What did it do? It swept liquidity and created an imbalance out. So also fair value gap right here. I'm going to mark both of those out because they overlay each other somewhat. And I'm going to dump down on my time frames. And at the same time, I'm going to refine my fair value gap. So where is my fair value gap? Right there. Come in here. Not a whole lot. You know, I'd probably leave it there, maybe. So go back on the 15. Come up. The price is in there. Dump down to the five. You can even do the three. You know, like I said, it's all fractal. So. Now, this is a thing that smart money doesn't do, but ICT really points out is that it's okay if price wicks your order block. That doesn't mean it's invalid. Look what the close is doing. The close tells you the story. The wicks are just noise. So the close is telling me that price can't close above the order block and then it rejects it. So to me, this order block is still valid. I don't care if it's wicked. It. That just means, you know, it swept some liquidity, which is even better. So, you know, smart money would say, oh, this order block's invalid. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to look for, you know, this candle as my long. I'll make this red for smart money. Go. So smart money is going to have a trade like this. They're like, okay, we're bullish. Look at that big bullish impulse, whatever. Uh, equal highs over here, which is all fine, you know. But to me, you know, that story is telling me that, you know, I can't close above there. So price should respect that. So what do we have here? You go down to the one minute. I want to see this low get taken out before I enter anything. Okay, there's our low. And so once our low's been swept, we've had our liquidity sweep. Or sorry, we've had our market structure shift. A market structure shift is just um, 
a three candle pattern where the middle one is either lower or higher depending. So you see you have here, you have one, two, three, the middle one's higher. So if price goes above that, market's shifted bullish. Here you have three candles, one, two, three, if price goes below that or this, it's bearish. Um, so price is bearish to me. We've got our one minute fair value gap in the H1 fair value gap, or sorry, in the H1 order block. Uh, you can see our fair value gap didn't really work. It wasn't a huge one, but we're still in that order block. And that, see, that's why I wanted to go through order blocks for you guys, because it might not always be the fair value gap. It might be the order block. Like I said, the more confluences you have, the more high probability a trade is. So if you have a fair value gap and an order block and a breaker and you got all this shit, the trade's probably gonna go in your direction. So here, same thing, we swept liquidity. As we've done that, you know, um, hmm. so on these lower time frames, you can use the same stop losses here above the candle, but you know, I'm gonna cover the high or at least cover the body. It's just to be safe. Cause like I said, when you, when you get down to these lower time frames, it starts getting a little choppy. And what's my next target? So this order block is my next target. So what is that? So if I mark that out, that's a three to one. The price comes down and fills that imbalance. So that's why I'm saying, you know, for ICT, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a sweep of liquidity and imbalance. And, you know, that's kind of my back and forth I go between. Now, smart money is going to be looking for a long here. They're not going to be wanting to short this big bullish impulse. So smart money is going to be looking to long from, you know, this order block for them. So smart money sees that they see their price being respected. They see a break of, or sorry, a chalk here. And they're going to be in, you know, right here. And what happens to smart money? They get taken out. Mm -hmm. Now, again, there's news. Oh, sorry. It's FOMC day, but still, you know, that that's kind of why you have to look at what the market's doing. And that's one of the reasons that I went away from smart money. I learned to trade smart money and it's great. Maybe like one out of 10 times and you hit like a one to 10 R. But the thing is, if you're trying to pass prop firm challenges and get payouts, that's not a great thing to do. And also your psychology isn't great because you're taking nine losses to get one win. And, you know, those losses might not be, you know, a couple days, those losses might be for months, but you're taking two months of losses to get one big ass win. Whereas this, you know, your, your win rates tend to be higher. You know, they tend to be like 40, 70%. And you can kind of just sit here. And if you see a clean setup, you train your eye to look for clean price action. You can sit here all day and do this. What's price doing right now? Okay. So this is actually, is this live? Yeah, this is live. Okay. So this is fucking beautiful. What do we just talk about? Liquidity sweep. Again, one hour. Bearish. Sorry, bullish order block. And what did price just do? Price just came in and tapped that. Let me dump it down. See what we got. Uh, we got some equal lows down there. You can see price respect to that order block came into that order block taken off. I kind of miss this move, but you know, this is a pretty solid move. Sweep of liquidity in market structure shift out. Um, you've got your order block there. And again, if it's like a shit ton of wick, you know, use the whole thing if it's small. It, it's hard because you kind of got to train your eye. Like this little one, I'd use the whole thing. Um, You know, you can even include that if you want to. But, you know, you're kind of adding all these different confluences in your mind. And you're seeing what price has done. So price has swept liquidity, market structure shift. It's going to look to, you know, fill this imbalance, fills the imbalance. Um, Again, there's our entry. What is this? Five minute. Five minute, you know, you can take the bottom of that candle or you can place it lower. I don't love these equal lows down here, you know, but if you did target that liquidity, you're still in it again, reason not to go break even, or, you know, if you want to be safe, you can set your take profit a little lower, you know, cause again, smart money guys, what they're saying is bearish order flow and they're looking at, um, 
you know, probably that. Mm. That's their order block. And then they're looking for their break a structure here and their order block here. So smart money is going to be looking at this trade. Mm -hmm. They are going to be looking at right here. So they'll probably place their stop right there and they'll target, they'll target liquidity too down here. I'm just curious. I'm going to let this play out. Honestly, I'm just curious what this does. This is my trade on the left and that would be a smart money trade on the right. Um, like I said, I kind of missed it, so I'm not going to get in there late. You can get in there late if you really wanted to, but to me, you know, prices filled that it's filled that that was kind of your second opportunity to get in there. They gave you a third on right here. You know, that's I'm late to the game, so I'm not taking any of that. But you know, my money would be, it went like that. I'll update you guys and see what this does. Like I said, today is February 5th, 2024. This is the live market. I don't know how much, you know, better I can show you guys that, but let's see what happens. All right, guys. So price is going to take a while to play out. It's the end of the day right now. It's like 4, 3 PM in New York city. So it's probably going to happen tomorrow or London. I'll comment down below what happens or create a short or something for you guys. Um, but I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that helped and gave a little clarity on how I look for order blocks. Now ICT uses order blocks. That might not be exactly what, you know, his exact wording was, but that's what I've seen the most success with. And that's what I've seen work for other people as well. So if that was helpful or you have any questions, leave a comment below. I'll be sure to answer them. And if you haven't had a chance, please check out our series of trading view indicators and expert advisor for MT4 and MT5. It uses ICT principles to look for entries. You know, one system is great for trending markets and for trading like a person would where it takes fixed risk to reward and fixed taste, take profit. The EA is really good for kind of stacking money real quick. So I want to create a system for you guys based on ICT principles that works in all market conditions. So you guys can be profitable. You know, when I win, you win. I use all the same things myself. I use both. I use the indicators and I use the expert advisor myself. So, you know, no scams here. There's one guy giving me shit the other day, but you know, like, I created these things for myself and I figured I might as well take my time and energy that I made into making them and offer them to you guys. So you guys could, you know, use them to be profitable as well. So we all fail together. We all succeed together and I'll see you guys next time.